Jamie Foxx suffered a very serious medical emergency that landed him in the hospital. Um, and we are going to describe just how serious this is. So one day I, one day I, I flipped it on him and showed up in a town, it was town car days. I had a town car, popped out the town car with a camera, said, yo, Puff, yo, you gotta let me film this. Okay, so we all remember Jamie Foxx, who vanished from the entertainment scene soon after the reports emerged that suffered from a medical emergency, right? Well, the word has it that Jamie was allegedly silenced by Diddy after he started to spill the deets on the infamous Diddy parties. Fans became more suspicious after Jamie's family did everything to conceal details of Jamie's ailment. So without further ado, let's get into this. 1. Medical Emergency so, back in April of last year, the reports claimed that Jamie Foxx was hospitalized in Georgia, and later on, his daughter revealed that the actor had experienced a medical complication. She didn't specify exactly what happened medically, however, sources with knowledge of the event claimed that Foxx was not transported by an emergency vehicle and it did not take place while on the set of the Netflix film Back in Action. Kareem Fox shared on her Instagram account on behalf of Fox family, saying, We wanted to share that my father, Jamie Fox, experienced a medical complication yesterday. Luckily, due to the quick action and great care, he is already on his way to recovery. We know how beloved he is and appreciate your prayers. The family asks for privacy during this time. Sources at the hospital claim that Jamie has spoken to the police. The Grammy Award-winning actor alleged that his medical complication was not natural, but because someone was after him. His explosive remarks have unsettled many of his fans. One of them reported on Twitter, Jamie Foxx told the cops somebody's trying to unalive him. I'm trying to tell you, man, it's like they have a timer on these celebs' lives. I believe him. Well, at first glance, it may seem like the life threat claim is really pushing it, but TMZ reported that Jamie was in very critical condition and many thought he actually might not make it. His friends finally reported in and flew in from overseas to be with him. Bad enough that family members from out of outside of Atlanta, there were some in Atlanta, but family members from outside flew in and rushed to the hospital to be by his side. According to TMZ, the actor's absence during these last eight days of the film had put the film's completion in jeopardy. You see, Jamie Foxx's sudden serious illness has producers scrambling on the movie set. Sources explained that the doctors had decided to keep the actor at the hospital while they ran tests to determine what exactly happened to him. However, those were online rumors that indicated that Fox suffered a stroke, but it wasn't confirmed by doctors or the family. Well, after radio silence for more than two months, the Ray star took on Instagram on to share a video in which he spoke about the medical complication that caused him to be hospitalized. While he didn't specify about the condition that forced him to seek medical attention, Fox chose to focus on the gratitude for those who carried him through the ordeal. Thanks a billion to everybody. Been a long road, but all the prayers have been great, and God, people got me through. I know a lot of people were waiting on me or waiting or wanting to hear updates, but to be honest with you, I just didn't want you to see me like that, man. I want you to see me laughing, having a good time, partying, cracking a joke, doing a movie, television show. I don't want you to see me with tubes running out of me and trying to figure out if I'm going to make it through. The actor used the opportunity to dispel any rumors that have revolved since his emergency first occurred, including claims that he suffered from paralysis and vision impairment. As you can see, the eyes are working, the eyes are working just fine. I'm not paralyzed, but I went to hell and back and my road to recovery had some potholes as well. But I'm coming back and I'm able to work. Now, after almost one year of keeping details of his condition secret, Fox offered attendees one of the African American Film Critics Association's Special Achievement Awards luncheon a sneak peek of his untold story, while accepting AAFCA's Producers Award alongside his Foxhole Productions partner, Datari Turner. He said, everybody wants to know what happened, and I'm going to tell you what happened, but I've got to do it in my own way. I'm going to do it in a funny way. We're going to be on stage. We're going to get back to the stand-up sort of roots. It'll be called What Happened Was, and it's got all the things that happened, especially on our side of the community. Now, you might remember that before the hospitalization drama, Jamie was hale and hearty shooting his new film. Interestingly, Jamie Foxx revealed some juicy details about the music mogul Buffy. You see, sometime back, a video of Jamie popped up on the internet that raised questions and made an uproar. What I did was, I would show up to the party in my little, uh, in a little town car. Oh well, Jamie was a hardcore fan of Diddy back in the day and tried his luck to join one of the parties. 
And now we all know that Jamie Foxx is a late night hot seat favorite, and he recently stopped by Colbert to talk about Diddy's exceptional parties and the insane stunt he pulled to become part of the big round. After starting a friendship with a rap mogul by posing as a videographer, they started partying together more frequently, including parties Diddy himself would throw. At that time, Puff was the biggest guy in the world. You know, you couldn't even get in this party, so the way I would get in this party is I'd show up with a camera. Puff, yo, you gotta let me film this, the whole thing, we need to document this. Jamie also revealed that Diddy would waste money like water on the parties, and he had to teach him about budget. I would hang out and watch him throw parties. He threw a party and said, Yo, Playboy, this party costs a million and a half dollars. I'm like, are you out of your mind? I said, Puff, I will throw you a party for about 400 bucks that will rival this party. Two, Diddy. But soon after those clips went viral, Jamie suffers a medical emergency. You might not remember, but the interviews about Jamie Foxx revealing the substance game of the Hollywood were all pretty popular around the same time. Remember how Kanye West claimed that the pills prescribed in celebrity cases are filed with a large amount of lithium that dissolves the brain? He explained that his substances are very addictive and it slowly affects a person's critical thinking ability as well. When I asked them how much lithium did you want to put me on exactly, it took them four days to answer because they were embarrassed about the amount. Jamie explained that the elites tried to play the same trick on him. The Jaguar rights also joined in the conversation. The Jag highlighted the fact that Diddy has always been hale and hearty, even when all the uptown oldies either lost their lives or suffered terrible incidents. She said, Uptown Records started with five people, Andre Harrell, Albie Schur, Heavy D and Buff, Diddy and Kim Porter, who was the longest working employee. She was there from the very beginning. She was Andre's personal assistant. Kim is dead, Heavy D is dead, Andre Harrell is dead. The only two left are Puffy and Al, and Al almost died. Isn't that interesting? She claimed that she found the past of the Uptown artists really suspicious, as all of them were, in some way or another, working on the telling story of their life that would eventually include Diddy. Fans speculate that Diddy didn't want to get past wrongdoings coming to light, at any cost. Jaguar questioned Diddy's upward trajectory, while others were flatlined. She said, Has Puffy ever been in a coma? Has anything ever happened to him? He must be the luckiest man alive because it seems like everybody that worked in Uptown Records from the very beginning are gone, except for him. Fans also pointed out that the Jamie Foxx situation was quite bizarre. The whole Jamie Foxx situation is weird. He was facing death, no real update on his recovery, and now all of a sudden, after the clone rumors, he's promoting a Netflix movie of him being cloned. That's weird. Later on, Jaguar explained that she had hired an entertainment lawyer around 2003 who had just left Bad Boy. Jag claimed that the lawyer confided in Wright and shared an unsettling story about her time at the label. Apparently, Diddy had a meeting with singer and New Jack City actor Christopher Williams about possibly signing a demo deal, but the attorney needed to get approval for some paperwork and went to Diddy's office where she found Christopher going down on Diddy. And allegedly, when the attorney questioned Diddy's intentions, he said, I'll do whatever the F I want in my building. It's power. See, if I make a man suck my private, I could make people do anything for money. Jaguar continued to address the incident, accusing him of driving the attorney out of work. She said, That's what you said, Puff, about Christopher Williams, sucking your private for a demo deal and you cut him a check, and you chased that young woman out of New York just like you tried to chase Wendy Williams out of New York and she came to work for me. She was a wonderful woman, and she was a brilliant attorney, and she thought she was signing up for the ride of her life. Not only that, after Jamie's comeback, reports start popping up about Jamie Foxx being sued for allegedly exploiting a woman at a rooftop bar in New York City. An unnamed woman accused the Oscar-winning actor of inappropriate behavior and battery during an interaction that took place in August 2015. According to a lawsuit filed in the New York Supreme Court obtained by USA Today, the alleged victim filed anonymously as Jane Doe. Oscar award-winning actor Jamie Foxx is the latest star to face allegations. The 55-year-old is being sued over an alleged incident that took place in 2015. The suit claimed that she, along with her friend, were seated at a table next to Foxx's at Catch NYC. The friend asked Fox for a picture and took several pictures with him. However, it was afterward that he began complimenting her supermodel body and told her she looked like the actress Gabriella Union as pursuit. He then allegedly grabbed her by the arm and took her to a secluded area, where he put both hands under her crop top. In the lawsuit, Jane Doe accused the restaurant and bar, as well as Birnbaum, of negligent hiring, training, and supervision, and claimed that employees failed to report and prevent the alleged incident. 
The filing read, The defendants had knowledge of Fox's propensities for aggressive behavior towards females, the potential of unwanted S-touching and his bad disposition when consuming excessive alcohol. As a result of this incident, Jane Doe suffered and continues to suffer severe emotional distress and anxiety, humiliation, embarrassment, post-traumatic stress disorder, and other physical and emotional damages. Well, Jamie Fox has denied SA allegations made against him. A spokesperson for Fox said, The alleged incident never happened in 2020. This individual filed a near-identical lawsuit in Brooklyn. That case was dismissed shortly thereafter. The claims are no more viable today than they were then. We are confident they will be dismissed again. And once they are, Mr. Fox intends to pursue a claim for malicious prosecution against the person and her attorneys for refiling this frivolous action. Fans find it quite odd as the suit was filed under the Adult Survival Act. They speculated that it was quite possible Diddy tried to take Jamie down in such a way. However, he allegedly fell into his own trap when his own alleged victim came out of hiding. 3. Diddy's Lawsuits and Raids Back in November 2023, Cassie filed a lawsuit in New York against Diddy, whom she dated off and on again from 2007 to 2018. In her complaint, she accused Diddy of R-ing and A-ing her over the past course of their decade-long relationship. Once Cassie finally decided to end the relationship in September 2018 over dinner, she alleged Diddy forced her way into her home and took advantage of her. In a statement to People, Combs lawyer Ben Brofman denied the allegations, which he called offensive and outrageous. Mr. Combs vehemently denies these offensive and outrageous allegations. Miss Ventura's demand for $30 million under the threat of writing a damaging book about their relationship was unequivocally rejected as blatant blackmail. Despite withdrawing her initial threat, Miss Ventura has now reported a filing lawsuit riddled with baseless and outrageous lies, aiming to tarnish Mr. Combs' reputation and seeking a payday. A day after Ventura filed her lawsuit, Diddy and the singer announced they resolved the claims in the lawsuit to their mutual satisfaction. The parties added that there will be no further details publicly released about the terms of the agreement. Days after settling the lawsuit, with Cassie, that he was accused of essay in a lawsuit filed with the Manhattan Supreme Court. According to court documents, a woman named Joy Dickerson Neal accused Diddy of Ding and Ring her when she was a college student at Syracuse University in 1991. Attorneys for Dickerson Neal claimed she was the victim of revenge corn after the music mogul allegedly recorded the incident and shared the tape with others in the music industry. At the time of the filing, which occurred as the New York State Adult Survival Act window was about to close, Diddy denied the allegations, claiming Dickerson Neal fabricated the story. The last-minute lawsuit is an example of how a well-intentioned law can be turned on its head. Miss Dickerson's 32-year-old story is made up and not credible. Mr. Combs never aid her and she implicates companies that do not exist. This is purely a money grab and nothing more. That same day, Diddy was accused of essay by a third woman, according to a lawsuit filed in New York County Supreme Court. In the lawsuit obtained by People, a Jane Doe alleged that Diddy and singer-songwriter Aaron Hall took turns aring her and a friend in New York City more than 30 years ago. Just like other cases, Diddy denied these allegations as well. These fabricated claims falsely allege misconduct from over 30 years ago and filed at the last minute. This is nothing but a money grab because of Mr. Combs' fame and success. He is an easy target for anonymous accusers who lie without a conscious or consequence for financial benefit. Combs was hit with a new lawsuit recently in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York. NBC News reported the plaintiff turned out to be a former record producer and videographer, Rodney Lil Rod Jones. In the lawsuit, Jones explained that he started working under Sean when he was requested to produce some of his songs for a new album. However, he claimed that Sean had devastating impacts on his life. The defendants in the case are not just Diddy, but a whole group of his social circle. As far as defendants, there are a number of them. There's Diddy, his son Justin Combs, the CEO of Universal Music Group, the CEO of Motown Records, which is the parent company of Love Records. There's a woman named Christina who is the chief of staff to Diddy. There's Motown Records, Universal Music Group, Love Records, and some others. So there's a lot of defendants. Jones has accused Combs of SH and threatening him between September 2022 and November 2023. During the time they reportedly worked together, he alleged that he has video and audio evidence of Diddy and his staff engaging in serious illegal activity for over a year. This came after Jones revealed that he used to stay with Diddy months at a time for production purposes, which in turn became an opportunity for Diddy to inappropriately touch him in various places. Rodney claims that after he was fed up with Diddy's behavior, he talked up the issue with Diddy's chief of staff, Christina, who brushed off his worries, chalking Diddy's behavior to his personality. But Rodney wasn't done here. In his 70-page complaint, Rodney claimed that Diddy tried 
tried to entice him into having intimacy with another man. According to the plaintiff, Diddy tried to make him do inhumane actions under the impression that this was the way of the industry. As a result of back-to-back -back essay complaints and lawsuits, properties owned by Diddy located in Miami and Los Angeles were raided by Homeland Security. Credible news outlets have cited an unnamed source that claimed the federal officials in Manhattan have interviewed three women and a man, and three other interviews are scheduled in relation of allegations of STSA and the solicitation and distribution of illegal narcotics and firearms. In a statement, Homeland Security Investigations confirmed that Homeland Security Investigations executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation, with the assistance of HSI Los Angeles, HSI Miami, and local law enforcement partners. The development in a slew of essay related cases has shock the industry. Sean Diddy Combs. Yesterday, we told you how federal agents searched two of his properties as part of an investigation into alleged Despite the chaos that ensued, Diddy's attorney has been adamant about Diddy's innocence, claiming that the raid was just a ploy to intimidate his clients. He said, This unprecedented ambush, paired with an advanced coordinated media presence, leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. There is no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. Fans believe that given Diddy's spotty history, it is possible that he might have fed something to Jamie that led to the medical emergency. Yeah, I think Jamie Foxx's story is true. Jamie isn't the type of person to make lies, especially about his life, so I think he's telling the truth about Diddy trying to poison him. And that's it for today. See you at the next one. Goodbye.